On a chilling Halloween night, a group of friends Sarah, Jake, Alex, and I set out on a thrilling adventure to explore an abandoned house that had been rumored to be haunted for years. The old Victorian-style mansion loomed before us, its windows boarded up, and the once grand structure now consumed by the passage of time. As we approached the crumbling entrance, a feeling of unease settled in the pit of my stomach. I could sense that this place held secrets, dark and untold. Nevertheless, curiosity got the better of us, and with heart-pounding excitement, we decided to explore its decaying rooms. The interior was filled with cobwebs and dust, a true relic of the past. We wandered from room to room, discovering remnants of a forgotten era. Among the debris, we stumbled upon an ancient-looking wooden box with intricate carvings. Curiosity peaked, Alex carefully opened the box, revealing a weathered Ouija board. Its planchette seemed to beckon us, inviting us to partake in a game of unknown consequences. Sarah hesitated, unsure if we should tamper with something that seemed to carry an ominous aura. Come on, it's just a game. What could possibly go wrong? Jake declared, attempting to lighten the mood. Against our better judgment, we agreed to give it a try, placing our fingers lightly on the planchette. We asked simple questions, treating it as a mere Halloween game. However, as we continued, a strange sensation overcame us. It felt as if an invisible force was guiding our movements. The planchette moved erratically, spelling out chilling messages and predicting unsettling events. Fear gripped our hearts, and we exchanged fearful glances. We wanted to stop, but the Ouija board seemed to have a will of its own, refusing to release its hold on us. Suddenly, the planchette spelled out a name, Anna. None of us knew anyone by that name, and yet, the atmosphere shifted dramatically. The air grew colder, and the dim light flickered menacingly. Is there anyone here with us? Alex nervously inquired, half expecting the planchette to respond with a yes. To our shock, it did. The planchette moved towards the yes on the board, confirming the presence of an unseen entity. Panic set in as we realized we had opened a door to the unknown. Fearing that we had unleashed something beyond our understanding, we frantically tried to say goodbye and end the session. But the planchette moved with more intensity, refusing to let us go. It seemed to feed off our terror, growing stronger with each passing second. Desperation filled the room as we struggled to control the planchette's movements. The Ouija board spelled out cryptic warnings, promising malevolent consequences if we didn't comply with its demands. Please, we didn't mean any harm. Let us go. Sarah pleaded, her voice trembling. But the Ouija board remained relentless. It seemed to take pleasure in our fear and helplessness. The messages grew more sinister, and we realized that we had unknowingly become part of a terrifying game. In a moment of desperation, I mustered all my courage and forcefully removed my fingers from the planchette, breaking the connection. I urged my friends to do the same, and together, we pushed the Ouija board away, sealing it back inside the box. As we retreated from the abandoned house, we could still feel the lingering presence of the dark entity. Our hearts raced as we tried to comprehend the inexplicable events that had just unfolded. We had unknowingly tampered with forces beyond our control, and the consequences were far more chilling than any Halloween scare. Since that terrifying night, we vowed never to dabble in the occult again. The experience served as a haunting reminder that some things are best left untouched, hidden in the shadows of Halloween lore. To this day, we cannot forget the sense of dread and horror that accompanied our ill-fated encounter with the Ouija board. It was a Halloween night we would never forget, a night that taught us the true meaning of fear and the importance of respecting the unknown. As the years go by, the memory of that eerie Halloween Ouija board remains etched in our minds, a chilling reminder that some mysteries are best left unsolved. Now before I begin reading the next story, I wish you a very happy Halloween. It'll be a delight if you could support my work by subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on this video. It was Halloween night, and my friends and I had gathered at my house for a spooky sleepover. The wind howled outside, adding to the eerie atmosphere that enveloped us. As we roamed the house, seeking thrills and chills, we stumbled upon an old wooden box in the dusty attic. 
curiosity got the better of us, and we opened it to find a weathered Ouija board nestled inside. Guys, we should totally play with this. It's the perfect Halloween activity. Samantha exclaimed, her eyes gleaming with excitement. I don't know, Sam. Isn't it just a silly game? I hesitated, unsure about dabbling with the supernatural. Come on, it'll be fun. Josh chimed in, encouraging us to give it a try. With some reluctance, we gathered around the Ouija board, placing our fingers on the planchette. Nervously, we asked, is there anyone here with us? To our astonishment, the planchette moved, spelling out the letters A-L-I-C-E. Who's Alice? I asked, puzzled. I have no idea, Samantha replied, her eyes wide with wonder. The Ouija board continued to respond to our questions, seemingly connecting us to the spirit of Alice. We asked about her life, her death, and her reasons for reaching out to us. The messages were cryptic, leaving us with more questions than answers. As the night progressed, we couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. The atmosphere grew heavier, and an eerie presence seemed to linger in the room. Despite our initial excitement, we started to question the wisdom of playing with the Ouija board. Maybe we should stop. This is getting too creepy, I suggested, my heart pounding in my chest. But Samantha was determined to get more answers. Just a little longer, guys. We need to find out who Alice is and what she wants. As we continued to communicate with the spirit, the messages became more erratic and unsettling. The planchette darted across the board, spelling out sinister warnings and ominous prophecies. Suddenly, the lights flickered, casting the room into darkness. The planchette moved with a mind of its own, and we could feel a strange energy coursing through our fingertips. Panic set in as we realized that we had lost control of the situation. I'm scared. I want to stop. Josh exclaimed, his voice quivering. Before we could react, the planchette spelled out a chilling message, leave now. Without hesitation, we removed our fingers from the Ouija board and stumbled back from the table. The room felt colder than before, and the air seemed to buzz with an unseen presence. We shouldn't have played with this thing. We need to get rid of it, Samantha said, her face pale with fear. As we hurriedly packed the Ouija board back into the box, a loud crash echoed from the hallway. Our hearts pounded in our chests as we cautiously made our way to investigate. In the hallway, we found the pictures on the wall scattered on the floor. Panic-stricken, we heard a faint whisper coming from the darkened corner of the room. Get out, before it's too late, the voice warned, barely audible. Terrified, we rushed downstairs and out into the cool night air. We knew that whatever had been unleashed through the Ouija board was now haunting us. Throughout the night, we heard strange noises and felt a presence watching us. It was as if the spirit of Alice was with us, lingering in the shadows. The next day, we decided to bury the Ouija board in the woods, hoping to sever any connection to the spirit world. But the memory of that Halloween night lingered, forever etched in our minds. From that day on, we vowed never to meddle with forces beyond our understanding. The Ouija board had shown us the terrifying consequences of playing with the unknown, and we had no desire to experience that terror ever again. Halloween would never be the same for us. The thrill of the holiday had been replaced with the chilling reminder that some mysteries are better left unsolved. And though we never saw Alice again, we couldn't shake the feeling that she still watched us from the shadows, a constant reminder of that fateful Halloween night. It was Halloween night, and a chill had settled over the remote cabin nestled deep within the dark woods. A group of strangers had gathered, drawn together by a common desire to explore the mysteries of the supernatural. Among them were curious thrill-seekers, skeptics, and those seeking answers to questions that had haunted them for years. The cabin's rustic walls creaked as we settled around a worn wooden table. In the center lay an old Ouija board, its surface adorned with cryptic symbols and letters. We had all heard the rumors about the Forbidden Ouija Circle, a powerful ritual that was said to grant unimaginable power. Some laughed it off as mere superstition, while others remained silent, their nervous anticipation palpable in the air. As we placed our fingertips on the planchette, we felt a strange energy coursing through us. 
The candlelight flickered, casting eerie shadows on the cabin's walls. Our breaths hitched, and we hesitated for a moment before summoning the courage to proceed. We're just having fun, right? Mark, a skeptical engineer, attempted to lighten the mood. Yeah, nothing to be afraid of. Let's see if this thing really works, Sarah, a spirited artist, chimed in. The planchette moved hesitantly at first, spelling out seemingly random letters. We exchanged nervous glances, wondering if someone among us was pulling a prank. But as the session continued, the messages became more coherent, revealing personal details about our lives that only we knew. This is incredible. How could it possibly know all this? Emily, a psychology major, asked with a mix of fascination and unease. As we delved deeper into the Ouija circle, we asked questions about the future, seeking guidance and reassurance. But the answers took a sinister turn, predicting events of darkness and despair. The atmosphere grew heavy with a sense of foreboding. I think we should stop. This doesn't feel right, I whispered, my heart racing. But some were reluctant to end the session, intrigued by the mysterious power the Ouija board seemed to possess. As we continued, the planchette moved more forcefully, almost as if it had taken on a life of its own. Then, a deafening thud echoed through the cabin. Startled, we turned to see the cabin door had slammed shut on its own. Panic washed over us as we realized that we were no longer alone. The temperature dropped, and an icy breeze swept through the room. Shadows danced on the walls, and an overwhelming feeling of dread filled the air. I've had enough of this. Let's leave. Mark demanded, trying to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. Suddenly, the planchette flew off the board, crashing against the wall with an unnerving force. Our hearts pounded in our chests as we huddled together in fear. What have we done? Sarah whimpered. As if in response to her question, a deep, guttural voice echoed through the cabin, speaking in an unknown language. The air seemed to vibrate with an otherworldly energy, and the cabin's walls seemed to close in on us. We need to break the circle. Now! Emily shouted, her voice trembling. In a panic, we placed our hands back on the planchette, pushing it forcefully towards the word goodbye. But the planchette refused to move, as if held in place by an unseen force. Fear engulfed us, and it felt as if the spirits we had unwittingly awakened were now trapped with us in the cabin. We were no longer in control, and the consequences of our actions were becoming increasingly apparent. With all our strength, we forced the planchette towards goodbye once more. Finally, it budged, and we felt the oppressive atmosphere begin to lift. As the cabin door swung open, we ran into the chilling embrace of the night. Breathing heavily, we vowed never to dabble with the forbidden Ouija circle again. Halloween would never be the same for us. The thrill of the supernatural had become a haunting reminder of the night we had unleashed forces beyond our understanding. And though we had escaped with our lives, we couldn't shake the feeling that something malevolent still lurked in the darkness, waiting for another opportunity to be set free. From that day on, we learned that some secrets were better left buried, and some rituals were best left unexplored. It was Halloween night, and I was excited to celebrate with friends and family. My cousin, Emma, handed me a mysterious gift wrapped in black and orange paper. Happy Halloween. I hope you like it, she said with a mischievous grin. I tore open the wrapping to reveal an old wooden box with intricate carvings. Inside, I found an Ouija board, its surface adorned with cryptic symbols and letters. Wow, thanks, Emma. This is so cool. I exclaimed, intrigued by the ancient-looking game. As the night progressed, the excitement of Halloween took over, and I forgot about the Ouija board. But as the clock struck midnight, curiosity got the better of me. Alone in my room, I decided to give the board a try. I placed my fingers on the planchette and hesitated for a moment before asking, Is anyone there? To my surprise, the planchette started moving on its own, spelling out the word yes. My heart skipped a beat, and I assumed that someone in the family was playing a prank on me. I laughed it off, thinking it was just a coincidence. 
but as I continued to play, the answers became eerily accurate, revealing details about my family that only a few would know. Questions about the past, secrets long buried, and a tragedy that had haunted my family for years surfaced on the board. Who are you? I asked, my voice trembling. The planchette moved to spell brother. A chill ran down my spine. My older brother, Jason, had died tragically in a car accident years ago. The wound was still fresh, and the pain had never fully healed. The Ouija board couldn't possibly know about this painful past. Is this some kind of sick joke? I whispered, tears welling up in my eyes. But deep down, I knew there was something more to it. I couldn't dismiss the strange connection between the Ouija board and my family's tragedy. As I continued to play, the atmosphere in the room grew heavy, and an unsettling feeling crept over me. It was as if the spirits of the past were reaching out, trying to convey a message. Tell me what happened to Jason, I asked, my voice barely audible. The planchette moved slowly, spelling out C.A.R. accident. My hand shook, and I struggled to catch my breath. This couldn't be a coincidence. The Ouija board was somehow connected to my brother's death, and I had to know more. Was it an accident? I asked, desperate for answers. The planchette moved again, spelling out an O. My heart pounded in my chest as I tried to make sense of the message. If it wasn't an accident, then what happened to Jason? Who is responsible for his death? I asked, my voice trembling. The planchette moved to spell out a name, a name that I recognized. It was someone close to our family, someone I had never suspected. I felt a wave of anger and betrayal wash over me. The Ouija board had opened a doorway to a painful truth that had remained hidden for so long. As I continued to use the Ouija board, more details of the tragic event unfolded. It was as if the board had become a vessel for the spirits of the past, and they were desperate to share their stories. Terrified and overwhelmed, I decided to put the Ouija board away. The weight of its revelations was too much to bear, and I knew that meddling with the supernatural could have dangerous consequences. In the days that followed, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had been awakened. The Ouija board had opened a door to a dark and painful past, and I knew that I had to confront the truth. I started digging into my family's history, searching for answers and seeking closure. As painful as it was, I knew that facing the past was the only way to move forward. Halloween night had changed my life forever. The innocent gift had become a portal to a haunting connection, unraveling the secrets of the past and revealing the truth behind my brother's tragic death. I learned that some mysteries were better left unsolved and that playing with forces beyond our understanding could have dire consequences. The Ouija board had taught me a valuable lesson that the past should be left in peace and that some wounds could never fully heal. It was Halloween night and the air was filled with excitement and laughter as we gathered at Jenna's house for the annual Halloween party. The dimly lit living room was adorned with spooky decorations and a flickering jack-o'-lantern sat in the center of the coffee table. As the night progressed and the clock struck midnight, the thrill-seekers among us proposed playing with an Ouija board they had found in the attic. Come on, it'll be fun. Let's see if we can contact any spirits, Mark said, his eyes gleaming with excitement. I hesitated, unsure if I wanted to dabble with the supernatural. But peer pressure and curiosity got the better of me, and I reluctantly joined the group around the Ouija board. We placed our hands on the planchette and Jenna lit a few candles to set the mood. At first, it was all in good fun as we asked silly questions and laughed at the mysterious movements of the planchette. We felt like kids again, playing a harmless game. But as the night wore on, the atmosphere in the room changed. The once jovial mood turned somber, and an eerie silence settled over us. We asked the board if it could reveal any secrets about our futures, expecting playful answers. To our surprise, the planchette started moving in erratic patterns, spelling out strange and unsettling messages. The smiles faded from our faces, and a sense of unease washed over us. Who are we speaking to? Mark asked, his voice shaky. The planchette moved to spell out unknown. Is there anyone else here with us? Jenna inquired, her eyes wide with apprehension. 
The planchette moved again, spelling out yes. A chill ran down my spine, and I exchanged nervous glances with my friends. This was getting too real for our liking. Are you a good spirit? I asked, trying to regain some control over the situation. The planchette's response was chilling as it spelled out N-O. I felt a knot in my stomach. This wasn't a joke anymore. The Ouija board had tapped into something beyond our understanding, and we were treading on dangerous territory. Should we stop? Jenna suggested, her voice trembling. But curiosity got the better of us, and we decided to ask one more question, hoping for a reassuring answer. Is there something you want to tell us? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. The planchette moved slowly and spelled out a string of letters that made no sense. As we tried to decipher the cryptic message, a sudden gust of wind blew out the candles, plunging the room into darkness. Fear gripped us, and we fumbled to light the candles again. But when the room was illuminated once more, the Ouija board was gone. It had vanished into thin air. What just happened? Jenna gasped, her eyes wide with terror. I felt a sense of panic rise within me as I realized that we had opened a door we couldn't close. The Ouija board had unleashed something beyond our control, and now we were left to deal with the consequences. We searched frantically for the Ouija board, but it was nowhere to be found. It had disappeared as mysteriously as it had appeared. As the hours ticked by, strange things started happening around us. Objects moved on their own, eerie whispers filled the air, and the temperature in the room dropped drastically. It was as if the supernatural force we had unleashed was now haunting us. In a desperate attempt to undo our actions, we performed a cleansing ritual, but it only seemed to anger the entity further. Our efforts to rid ourselves of the malevolent presence were in vain. As dawn approached, the atmosphere in the room finally calmed, and the strange occurrences ceased. Exhausted and shaken, we vowed never to mess with the Ouija board again. Halloween night had forever changed us. The innocent desire for thrills had turned into a night of terror, and the consequences of our actions were something we would never forget. We had learned a hard lesson about the dangers of playing with forces beyond our understanding. The Ouija board had taught us that some mysteries were best left unsolved and that meddling with the supernatural could have dire consequences. From that night on, we never spoke of the Ouija board again, but the memories of that Halloween night would forever haunt us, a chilling reminder that some doors should never be opened. It was Halloween night, and the campus was alive with excitement and anticipation for the annual Halloween party. The corridors of our college dormitory were adorned with creepy decorations, and the air buzzed with the thrill of spooky traditions. As the night grew darker, my friends and I decided to participate in a daring tradition using an Ouija board to communicate with the spirits. In my dorm room, we gathered around a small table, illuminated only by candlelight. The Ouija board lay in the center, its letters and numbers glowing eerily in the dimly lit room. We laughed nervously, dismissing the stories we had heard about Ouija boards as mere superstitions. Who's going first? asked John, grinning mischievously. I'll do it, I volunteered, trying to sound brave. As I placed my fingers on the planchette, the room fell into silence. We were all eager to see what would happen, but none of us really believed we would make contact with the other side. Is there anyone here with us? I asked, my voice quivering slightly. At first, nothing happened, and we exchanged skeptical glances. But then, to our astonishment, the planchette began to move slowly across the board. We all gasped in surprise. It's moving. Are you doing this, Sarah? Mark asked, trying to hide his nervousness. I swear, I'm not. I replied, my heart pounding in my chest. The planchette continued to move, spelling out words that formed a coherent sentence. I am here. My friends and I exchanged wide-eyed looks, the gravity of the situation sinking in. We had made contact with something. But was it just one of us moving the planchette unconsciously? We couldn't be sure. Who are you? John asked, his voice shaky. The planchette moved again, this time spelling out a name, Emma. Emma, are you a spirit? Lisa asked, her voice trembling. 
Yes. We were all in awe and fear at the same time. This was no longer a simple game, it felt real, and we were not sure how to handle it. What do you want? I asked, trying to muster courage. The planchette spelled out a series of letters that didn't make sense to us at first. But then it became clear. Help me. Help you? How can we help? Mark questioned. As we continued to communicate with the spirit named Emma, she revealed a tragic tale of being a student at our college many years ago. According to her story, she had been a bright and promising student until she mysteriously disappeared on Halloween night, never to be seen again. We were all captivated by her story, but also frightened. We wondered if this was some elaborate prank or if there was a more logical explanation. But the undeniable accuracy of the information she provided about the college's past made us believe that we were indeed communicating with a spirit. As the night wore on, we asked Emma more questions and tried to understand how we could help her. She seemed desperate to find peace and closure, but we didn't know how to provide it. Suddenly, the room grew colder and the candles flickered violently. A chill ran down my spine as a presence seemed to fill the room. We felt a malevolent energy, and fear gripped us all. Is there someone else here with us? Lisa whispered, her voice trembling. The planchette moved again, spelling out yes. Panic surged through us, and we realized that we had unknowingly invited another spirit into our midst. This one felt dark and malevolent, and we were no longer in control of the situation. In a frantic scramble, we removed our fingers from the planchette and closed the Ouija board. But the unsettling energy in the room lingered, and we knew that we had awakened something beyond our understanding. The remainder of the night was filled with unease and fear. We could feel the presence of the spirits around us, and we couldn't shake the feeling that they were still with us, long after the Ouija board was put away. From that night on, we swore off Ouija boards and vowed never to meddle with the supernatural again. The encounter with Emma and the malevolent spirit left an indelible mark on us, and we knew that some doors were better left closed. Halloween night had transformed from a fun-filled celebration into a night of terror and uncertainty. We had crossed paths with the supernatural, and the memory of that night would forever haunt us, a chilling reminder of the unknown forces that exist beyond our understanding. It was a chilling Halloween night when my family inherited an ancient Ouija board from our ancestors. The board was intricately carved with strange symbols and had an aura of mystery surrounding it. Excited and curious, we gathered around the dining table, candles flickering, and placed our fingers on the planchette. Is anyone here? My little sister, Sarah, asked with a hint of trepidation. For a moment, nothing happened. We exchanged glances, unsure if anything would come of this endeavor. But then, as if responding to Sarah's question, the planchette began to move slowly, spelling out a name. S-A-M-U-E-L. We were stunned. None of us had pushed the planchette, and yet, it seemed to be moving on its own accord. A shiver ran down my spine, and I felt an eerie presence in the room. Samuel, are you here with us? I asked cautiously. Yes. My heart raced as we continued to communicate with the spirit named Samuel. He claimed to be one of our ancestors who had been bound to the Ouija board by a dark curse centuries ago. Intrigued and slightly terrified, we listened to his story of betrayal and revenge, all linked to the Ouija board's dark past. As the night wore on, we couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. The air seemed to grow colder, and strange sounds echoed through the house. We chalked it up to our imaginations, convinced that we had merely worked ourselves into a spooky atmosphere. Little did we know that the Ouija board's curse was stirring something sinister. With each session, the encounters with Samuel grew more intense. He warned us of the curse's power and begged us to free him from the Ouija board's grip. At first, we thought it was just an elaborate act, but as strange things began to happen around the house, we started to doubt our initial skepticism. Objects would move on their own, doors would creak open, and we heard whispers in the dead of the night. Our once peaceful home had turned into a labyrinth of fear and uncertainty. My parents tried to dismiss the incidents as mere coincidences, but we knew better. The Ouija board had unleashed a malevolent force that we couldn't control. 
As Halloween night approached, the situation escalated. My sister claimed to see shadows moving in the corners of her room, and I heard eerie laughter echoing through the hallways. We were all on edge, our nerves frayed by the unexplainable events unfolding around us. Desperate for answers, we sought out an expert in paranormal activity. A knowledgeable woman named Mrs. Fields explained the history of the Ouija board and its dark associations with curses and malevolent spirits. She warned us that attempting to break the curse could be dangerous, but we were determined to free Samuel from his torment. Mrs. Fields guided us through a ritual to cleanse the Ouija board and break the curse. As we followed her instructions, the air seemed to crackle with energy, and the room filled with an otherworldly presence. Suddenly, the planchette moved with purpose, spelling out a message. I am free. The Ouija board fell silent, and the house was engulfed in an eerie stillness. The strange occurrences ceased, and we felt a sense of relief and accomplishment. Samuel was finally free, and we believed that our ordeal was over. However, as Halloween night came to a close, an unsettling feeling lingered. The events of the past few days had left a lasting impact on our family. We knew that we had faced something beyond our understanding, and the experience had forever changed us. To this day, the Ouija board sits locked away in a secure box, a reminder of the powerful forces that exist in the world. We no longer dabble in the unknown, understanding that some things are better left untouched. As Halloween comes around each year, we still feel a lingering sense of unease. We know that the ancient curse on the Ouija board may be dormant, but its presence remains a haunting reminder of the supernatural world that lurks just beyond the veil of our reality. It was Halloween night, and an eerie fog rolled into our quiet town, signaling the arrival of the haunted carnival. The flickering lights and unsettling music created an atmosphere of spine-chilling anticipation. My friends and I, drawn to the allure of the unknown, ventured into the carnival's depths. As we wandered through the dimly lit alleys, we stumbled upon a tent with a faded sign that read, Madame Zara's Mystical Seances. Intrigued by the idea of communicating with the unknown, we decided to take our chances. Upon entering the tent, we were greeted by Madame Zara, an enigmatic fortune teller with piercing eyes and an aura of mystery. Her presence sent shivers down my spine, but curiosity got the better of me. Madame Zara guided us to a dimly lit corner where an old Ouija board sat atop a small table. Welcome, brave souls, she said in a hushed voice, her accent thick with mystique. Tonight, we shall bridge the gap between the living and the dead. Sitting in a circle, we hesitantly placed our fingers on the planchette. Madame Zara began the seance, and the atmosphere in the tent shifted. The air felt charged with an unsettling energy, and I couldn't help but feel as though we were not alone. As we asked questions, the planchette moved with a will of its own, spelling out messages from beyond the veil. My heart pounded with a mixture of fear and fascination. The seance seemed harmless at first, but as the night wore on, we realized that something was amiss. The answers from the Ouija board grew darker and more malevolent. Madame Zara's demeanor changed and a sinister grin spread across her face. My friends and I exchanged uneasy glances, sensing that we had opened a door we couldn't close. Suddenly, the tent seemed to come alive with strange shadows and whispers that echoed through the air. The carnival's eerie music grew louder, drowning out our nervous laughter. Panic gnawed at the edges of our minds as we struggled to maintain composure. Is this some kind of elaborate prank? One of my friends whispered but we knew in our hearts that it was far from a joke. As the seance continued, the line between reality and illusion blurred. We felt as though we were slipping into a realm of nightmares where our deepest fears materialized before us. The Ouija board predicted tragedies and spoke of a sinister presence that lingered among us. Trying to dismiss the fear, we decided to end the seance. But as we lifted our fingers from the planchette, the carnival around us seemed to shift. The attractions twisted into grotesque forms, and the carnival's staff wore eerie masks that sent shivers down our spines. Is this a part of the act? I muttered, my voice trembling. Madame Zara's smile grew wider, her eyes glinting with an unsettling gleam. There are things in this world beyond your understanding, she said cryptically. 
you have trespassed into a realm that you do not comprehend. Terrified, we tried to flee the haunted carnival, but it was as if the world had warped around us. The carnival seemed to have a life of its own, a malevolent force that held us captive in its twisted reality. As we wandered through the nightmarish maze of attractions, the line between what was real and what was an illusion blurred. The faces in the crowd appeared distorted and malevolent, and the once joyful carnival turned into a nightmarish labyrinth of horrors. Desperation took hold of us as we searched for an escape. Each turn led us deeper into the abyss of terror, and our hearts pounded with the fear that we may never find our way out. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, we stumbled upon a hidden path that led us out of the haunted carnival. As we emerged into the cold night air, we breathed a sigh of relief, grateful to have escaped the clutches of the enigmatic Madame Zara and her sinister seance. But the memory of that night would forever haunt us. The Halloween carnival had left an indelible mark on our souls, a reminder that some mysteries are better left unsolved. We learn that there are forces in this world beyond our comprehension, and dabbling with the unknown can have terrifying consequences. As Halloween comes around each year, the haunted carnival returns to our town, and we avoid it like the plague. The nightmares of that fateful night still linger, a chilling reminder that the boundary between the living and the dead is not one to be trifled with. On a moonlit Halloween night, the chill in the air carried a hint of foreboding as my friends and I roamed the streets in search of spooky encounters. Our laughter echoed through the deserted streets, and we were thrilled by the prospect of finding something unique to mark this eerie occasion. As we ventured deeper into the dimly lit neighborhood, we stumbled upon an old antique shop, the Curio Emporium, which seemed to materialize out of thin air. Its windows were adorned with dusty relics and peculiar trinkets but what caught our attention were the Ouija boards displayed prominently on a vintage wooden shelf. Ouija boards? Are those even real? Mike scoffed, but his skepticism couldn't hide the glimmer of curiosity in his eyes. The shopkeeper, a frail old man with a long beard, emerged from the shadows. Ah, young souls, the Ouija boards are not to be trifled with, he warned in a voice that carried a hint of ancient wisdom. They hold the secrets of the past, and some say, they harbor malevolent spirits. We exchanged puzzled glances but couldn't resist the allure of the boards. The shopkeeper noticed our intrigue and reluctantly led us to a secluded corner of the shop, where an assortment of Ouija boards lay shrouded in an aura of mystery. These boards are not ordinary, the shopkeeper said gravely. Each one holds a dark story, and the spirits attached to them demand respect. A shiver ran down my spine, but curiosity and the spirit of Halloween overpowered my apprehension. We decided to choose one board each, eager to explore the tales they held. I chose a weathered board adorned with arcane symbols, feeling an inexplicable connection to its ancient charm. Emily chose a delicate Victorian-era board with ornate carvings, while Mike, the skeptic, went for a seemingly simple wooden board. As we left the shop, the atmosphere around us seemed to change. The air grew heavy, and an unsettling stillness engulfed the night. We found a secluded spot in the nearby park, lit up our candles, and placed our fingers on the planchette, eager to see what secrets these boards held. At first, nothing happened, and Mike couldn't help but tease, looks like the spirits are on holiday tonight. But just as he spoke, the planchette moved, gliding smoothly across the board. Our initial excitement gave way to nervousness, and we exchanged uneasy glances. It felt as if an invisible presence lingered around us, watching our every move. We asked simple questions at first, seeking validation of the board's legitimacy. With every response, our skepticism slowly dissolved, and we started asking more profound questions. The boards responded with eerie accuracy, revealing intimate details of our lives that only we knew. As the night wore on, the mood grew darker, and the boards seemed to hold us in a trance. Each board conveyed its unique tale, one more chilling than the last. We learned of tragic deaths, long-forgotten secrets, and tales of malevolent spirits seeking revenge from beyond the grave. With every revelation, the candles flickered wildly, casting eerie shadows around us. Our laughter had vanished, replaced by a sense of dread that gripped us tightly. 
Emily's Victorian era board spoke of a vengeful spirit wronged in life, and its wrath was now focused on those who dared to play with its resting place. Terrified, we decided to put the boards away, but it was too late, the spirits had been awakened. The air felt thick with their malevolence, and the once celebratory atmosphere of Halloween had turned into a nightmarish ordeal. With trembling hands, we rushed back to the Curio Emporium, desperate to seek the shopkeeper's help. But as we arrived, the shop had vanished into thin air, leaving only an empty lot in its place. Desperation took hold of us as we tried to find a way to put the spirits to rest. We followed the clues left by the Ouija boards, navigating through a maze of dark secrets and haunting memories. As the first rays of dawn began to light the sky, we finally unraveled the mystery of the boards. With a heavy heart, we performed a cleansing ritual, hoping to release the spirits from their tormented existence. As the last traces of malevolence dissipated, a profound sense of relief washed over us. We had confronted our darkest fears and emerged stronger for it. From that day on, we vowed never to underestimate the power of the unknown and to respect the ancient relics that held tales of sorrow and suffering. The Halloween night that started as a fun adventure had left an indelible mark on our lives, reminding us that some secrets are best left undisturbed, and the spirits of the past can be more real and haunting than we could have ever imagined. It was Halloween night, and the eerie glow of the full moon cast long shadows over the decrepit asylum. A chill lingered in the air, but it didn't deter our group of thrill-seekers. We were drawn to the abandoned building, with its dark history of insanity and despair, like moths to a flame. As we stepped inside the crumbling structure, the musty smell of decay greeted us. The asylum's history weighed heavily on our minds, but we laughed and joked to cover our unease. Among the debris scattered on the floor, a peculiar find caught our eye, an old Ouija board, its letters and symbols still faintly visible despite the years of neglect. Kara, the bravest of us all, couldn't resist the temptation. Let's use it, she said with an excited grin. What better way to celebrate Halloween than by trying to make contact with the other side? I was hesitant, but the thrill of the unknown tugged at me. Are you sure about this? They say Ouija boards can be dangerous. Mike chimed in, oh, come on. It's just a silly game. Nothing's going to happen. Against my better judgment, we gathered around the board, placing our fingers on the planchette. As we began asking questions, the planchette twitched, moving with a life of its own. At first, we laughed nervously, thinking one of us was playing a prank. But the planchette's movements grew more deliberate, spelling out words that sent shivers down our spines. The atmosphere around us shifted, and a sense of unease settled in the room. A chill breeze swept through, even though the windows were boarded up. Who are we speaking to? Kara asked, her voice trembling. The planchette moves, spelling out a name, E-V-E-L-Y-N. Evelyn, are you a spirit? I asked, half expecting the planchette to slide towards yes. Instead, the planchette moved to the letters N-O. It seemed we weren't communicating with a ghost, but with something else entirely. What are you then? Mike inquired, trying to maintain his bravado. The planchette spelled out a series of strange symbols and a name, K-A-I-N. It was unlike any language we had ever seen. Suddenly, a loud creak echoed through the asylum, causing us all to jump. The sound was followed by a series of echoing footsteps, as if someone, or something, was approaching us. Terrified, we scrambled to put away the Ouija board, but the planchette continued to move on its own, pointing to various letters as if spelling out a message. Help me, trapped, release, it spelled. The room grew colder, and a feeling of dread enveloped us. Kara suggested we should leave, but the footsteps were now coming closer. Panic seized us, and we followed the sounds to the asylum's basement. The basement was pitch black, and our flashlights barely illuminated the surroundings. The footsteps grew louder, closer, yet we saw no one. Fear gnawed at our sanity, and our hearts pounded in our chests. We shouldn't have done this. Mike whispered. Suddenly, a voice echoed through the darkness, a chilling laugh that sent shivers down our spines. It was an eerie, otherworldly sound that seemed to surround us from all directions. 
You should not have come, the voice whispered menacingly. Terrified, we stumbled backward, desperate to find an exit. The asylum seemed to close in around us, its walls twisting and warping like a malevolent presence. We have to get out of here. Kara urged, her voice trembling. As we ran back through the asylum, the darkness seemed to swallow us, and the walls seemed to shift and change. It was as if the building itself was alive, trapping us in its malevolent embrace. Just as panic threatened to consume us entirely, we found ourselves back at the entrance. The asylum's doors creaked open, and we spilled out into the cold night, gasping for breath. As we caught our breath, we realized that the Ouija board had disappeared, leaving us with a chilling sense of unease. We had awakened something sinister that Halloween night, something that had been waiting for someone foolish enough to play its sinister game. From that night on, the asylum stood as a dark reminder of our ill-fated encounter. The malevolence we had awoken lingered in the shadows, forever haunting our memories and warning us of the unseen dangers lurking on Halloween night. I've always been a skeptic when it comes to the supernatural. Ghosts, demons, all that stuff, I brushed it off as superstitious nonsense. But this Halloween, something happened that made me question everything I believed in. It all started with the old Ouija board my family inherited from my recently deceased uncle. The board had been tucked away in the attic for as long as I could remember, covered in dust and forgotten like some relic of a bygone era. My uncle was always into the occult and the esoteric, so it wasn't surprising that he had one of these lying around. My wife, Lisa, thought it might be a fun idea to use it at our Halloween gathering. We invited some close friends and family over for a spooky night of costumes, candy, and, apparently, contacting the other side. I was hesitant at first, but with enough prodding, I agreed. As the night descended and the kids were running around the house in their costumes, we gathered around the dining table, lit some candles, and placed the Ouija board in the center. Lisa, always the adventurous one, took the lead, placing her fingers lightly on the planchette. Is there anyone here with us? She asked, her voice wavering slightly with uncertainty. I rolled my eyes internally, thinking this was just a bit of fun. But then, to my surprise, the planchette began to move. Slowly, spelling out words as if guided by an invisible hand. Hello. A shiver ran down my spine as I watched the letters form. I glanced at Lisa, who looked equally startled. Our friends exchanged nervous glances, unsure if one of us was playing a prank. Who are you? Lisa asked cautiously. Fred. The name Fred appeared on the board. None of us knew a Fred, and we certainly didn't have any deceased relatives by that name. The room seemed to grow colder, and I could see our breath in the dim candlelight. What do you want, Fred? Someone else asked, their voice trembling. Get out. The planchette darted across the board, spelling out the words faster than before. A collective unease settled over the room. Maybe this was a joke, a hidden mechanism in the board, or someone pushing it intentionally. But something about it felt different, like an electric charge in the air. We decided to end the session, saying our goodbyes and formally closing the connection as instructed by countless online tutorials. The planchette slid to goodbye, and we all breathed a sigh of relief. That should have been the end of it, but that's when things got really strange. Over the next few days, our house started to change. At first, it was subtle, a creaking floorboard here, a flickering light there. I chalked it up to an old house settling, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I heard whispers in the dead of night, faint voices that seemed to come from the walls themselves. Then, one night, Lisa woke me up in a panic. She said she saw a shadowy figure standing at the foot of our bed, a shapeless silhouette that vanished when she turned on the light. I tried to reassure her, blaming it on a vivid dream, but deep down, I knew something was terribly wrong. As the days passed, our home became a battleground of the bazaar. Objects moved on their own, pictures fell from walls, and our children began having nightmares. Lisa's once bright demeanor had faded, replaced by a constant sense of dread. Desperation led me to seek the help of a local paranormal investigator, someone who specialized in cleansing haunted spaces. 
When he arrived at our home, he felt the oppressive atmosphere immediately. It's attached to the board, he explained, his tone grave. The Ouija board. You've awakened something, and it's not happy. The investigator performed a series of rituals, burning sage and muttering incantations, all while my family huddled together, watching with a mixture of fear and hope. As he concluded the cleansing, there was a palpable change in the air, a lifting of the oppressive weight that had settled over our home. Weeks turned into months, and gradually, the strange occurrences ceased. Our house felt like our own again, and Lisa slowly returned to her old self. We locked the Ouija board away, far from our reach, hoping to bury the memory of that horrifying Halloween night. But I can't help but wonder what else might be out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for someone to unknowingly invite it in. I used to be a skeptic, but now, I'm not so sure. Some things are better left untouched, especially when the darkness beyond the veil is real, and it's hungry. It all happened on a chilly October evening back in 2018. I was a high school sophomore living in a small town in Illinois. Halloween was right around the corner, and my friends and I were determined to make it the spookiest one yet. We decided to have a sleepover at my best friend Lisa's house, the one with the big, creepy attic. Our group consisted of Lisa, Sarah, Jake, and me. We were the tightest of friends, practically inseparable. We had all heard the rumors about Lisa's attic being haunted, and what better way to test the paranormal waters than a good old-fashioned sleepover? So, we gathered in her living room, clutching bags of chips, soda cans, and our sleeping bags. The evening started innocently enough, with pizza and horror movies on the agenda. But it wasn't long before someone suggested the idea that would change everything the Ouija board. Lisa's older brother had left it behind when he went off to college, and it had been collecting dust in the attic for years. With a mixture of curiosity and trepidation, we retrieved the Ouija board and set it up on the coffee table. The room was dimly lit, the shadows dancing along the walls, and the atmosphere was thick with anticipation. We placed our hands on the planchette, barely able to contain our nervous excitement. The board felt cold beneath our fingertips, and I could feel my heart racing in my chest. We asked the typical questions, Is anyone here with us? Can you hear us? At first, nothing happened. The planchette remained still, mocking our attempts to communicate with the other side. But just as we were about to give up, it started to move. Slowly, almost hesitantly, it glided over the letters, spelling out words one by one. Hello. A shiver ran down my spine as I stared at the board, my eyes wide with a mixture of awe and fear. It was working. Something was answering us. We asked the spirit's name, and it spelled out S-A-M. We couldn't contain our excitement as we bombarded Sam with questions. Who were they? How did they die? Were they happy on the other side? The answers were cryptic, and the planchette's movements grew more erratic. Sam claimed to be a spirit from the 1800s, and the more we prodded, the stranger the responses became. It was as if we had opened a door to a world we couldn't fully comprehend. As the night wore on, our unease began to grow. The room seemed to get colder, and the shadows in the corners of the room appeared to shift and writhe. We decided to say goodbye to Sam and close the session, but that's when things took a terrifying turn. The planchette refused to move to goodbye. It remained firmly planted on the board, no matter how hard we tried to push it. Panic set in as we realized that we had no control over the situation. We were trapped in a game we couldn't exit. Whispers filled the room, soft, disembodied voices that seemed to come from all directions. The planchette began to move on its own, spelling out words we didn't understand. It felt like the air was thick with a malevolent presence, something that wanted to communicate with us but not in a way we could comprehend. Fear nodded us as we struggled to break free from the Ouija board's grip. We tried to remove our hands, but they were stuck, as if glued to the planchette. Tears welled up in our eyes as we realized the gravity of the situation we had unleashed something beyond our control. The room grew darker, the shadows coalescing into a shapeless, sinister mass. It was as if the very essence of the room had become corrupted. And then, out of the darkness, a figure emerged, 
a spectral apparition with hollow eyes that seemed to pierce our souls. The figure spoke, its voice a haunting whisper that sent chills down our spines. It claimed to be a lost soul, trapped between the realms of the living and the dead. It told us that we had invited it into our world, and now it sought to claim us as its own. Panic set in as we struggled to free ourselves from the Ouija board's grasp. We pleaded with the entity, begging it to let us go. But it only laughed, a bone-chilling sound that echoed in our ears. Time seemed to stand still as we fought to break free. It felt like an eternity, an endless battle between the living and the dead. And then, with a final, desperate surge of energy, we managed to push the planchette to goodbye. The room was plunged into darkness, and the whispers faded away. We were left gasping for breath, our bodies drenched in sweat. The Ouija board lay still on the table, as if nothing had happened. We gathered our things and left Lisa's house that night, vowing never to speak of the incident again. But the memory of that night still haunts me, a reminder that there are forces in this world that we can never fully understand. The Ouija board had opened a door to a realm beyond our comprehension, and for a brief moment, we had glimpsed the darkness that lurks on the other side. So, fellow Redditors, if you ever find yourself tempted to dabble with the supernatural, remember my story. Some doors are best left unopened, and some games are better left unplayed. Because in the world of the paranormal, the line between curiosity and terror is razor thin, and once you cross it, there may be no turning back. It all began on a sweltering July evening back in 2017. I was a college student at the time, spending my summer break with my best friends, Mark and Emily. We were always on the lookout for adventure, and this particular night, we decided to explore an abandoned mansion known as Hollow House, nestled on the outskirts of town. Hollow House was a relic of a bygone era, a once grand mansion that had fallen into disrepair and legend. The locals claimed it was haunted, a place where strange things happened after dark. Of course, we didn't believe in ghosts, but the idea of exploring an old, decrepit mansion was too enticing to resist. We arrived at Hollow House as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long, eerie shadows across the overgrown lawn. The mansion loomed before us, a massive, dark silhouette against the twilight sky. It had a certain eerie charm, with ivy-covered walls and broken windows that seemed to watch our every move. As we ventured inside, the air grew heavy and musty, and the atmosphere was thick with anticipation. Our flashlights illuminated the decaying grandeur of the mansion, faded wallpaper, crumbling plaster, and abandoned furniture frozen in time. It was like stepping into a forgotten world. We explored room after room, our footsteps echoing in the silence. It was clear that no one had been here in years, and the mansion had become a sanctuary for dust and decay. But as we ventured deeper into the house, we began to notice something strange a series of eerie paintings that adorned the walls. Each painting depicted a different scene, all featuring a young girl with jet black hair and piercing, lifeless eyes. In one, she stood in a moonlit forest, surrounded by shadowy figures. In another, she sat alone in a dimly lit room, her expression devoid of emotion. It sent a chill down my spine, and I couldn't help but wonder who this girl was and why her image was scattered throughout the mansion. As we continued to explore, we came across a room that was unlike the others. It was smaller, tucked away in a corner of the mansion, and the door was slightly ajar. The air seemed to grow even colder as we pushed the door open, revealing a room filled with strange symbols and candles. In the center of the room was an old, weathered Ouija board, its planchette sitting in the middle, as if waiting for someone to use it. We exchanged nervous glances, but our curiosity got the best of us, and we decided to give it a try. What harm could it do, right? We placed our hands on the planchette, barely able to contain our excitement and fear. The room felt charged with an eerie energy as we asked the board the typical questions. Is anyone here with us? Can you hear us? At first, nothing happened. The planchette remained still, and we exchanged disappointed looks. But then, with a sudden, almost violent movement, it began to move on its own, spelling out words letter by letter. Hello. Our hearts raced as we realized that something was communicating with us. 
We asked the spirit's name, and it's spelled out E-L-I-Z-A-B-T-H. The name sent shivers down our spines, as it seemed to match the girl from the paintings. We bombarded Elizabeth with questions. Who is she? What did she want? But the answers were cryptic, and her messages became increasingly unsettling. She claimed to be a lost soul, trapped in Hollow House for centuries, and she yearned for freedom. As we continued to communicate with Elizabeth, the room grew colder, and the candles flickered ominously. It felt like the very air was charged with her presence, as if she was reaching out from beyond the grave. And then, with a sudden, bone-chilling gust of wind, the candles went out, plunging us into darkness. Panic set in as we fumbled for our flashlights, but when the beams of light pierced the darkness, Elizabeth was nowhere to be seen. We rushed out of the room and back into the hallway, our hearts pounding in our chests. But as we made our way through the mansion, we realized that something was terribly wrong. The atmosphere had grown even colder, and the paintings of Elizabeth seemed to come to life, their eyes following us with a malevolent gaze. We heard whispers in the darkness, soft, disembodied voices that seemed to come from all directions. The mansion itself seemed to shift and groan, as if it were alive and breathing. Fear gnawed at us as we struggled to find our way out, but the layout of the mansion had become a labyrinth, a never-ending maze of shadows and secrets. Hours passed, and as dawn broke, we finally stumbled out of Hollow House, our bodies bruised and our minds haunted by the events of that night. We vowed never to return, but the memory of Elizabeth and her haunted mansion still lingers in my nightmares. So, fellow Redditors, if you ever find yourself tempted to explore the unknown, remember my story. Some places are best left undisturbed, and some entities should never be awakened. Because in the dark corners of the world, there are forces that defy explanation, and once you open that door, there may be no escape.